Next up, we've got Catherine Irving uh, from uh, the Dunedin City Council. Uh, she's been uh, quietly responsible for a number of uh, uh, really cool initiatives. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, kia ora and uh, welcome to Dunedin. I've heard so much about farmers markets through this conference, which is really, really exciting. So uh, my presentation is about some initiatives that we're taking at the farmers market around minimising waste. So um, I'll rock on with it because uh, I've got to try and get it done in 10 minutes. Okay, for those of you not in Dunedin, the farmers market has been uh, going on here since 2003 and it's located by our Connex railway station. Um, it's absolutely fabulous, it really is a community hub. There's about 8,000 people that go through the gates of the farmers market on a regular weekend. So very, very busy community hub. About 80 vendors participate in the market on an ongoing basis. Um, so they sell a variety of produce and uh, meat, deli goods, confectionery, cooked foods, garden plants, that sort of thing. There's also two coffee vendors and uh, I've, I've singled them out because uh, there's a bit to talk about with them. I met the general manager of the farmers market at orientation this year and uh, he was saying we were trialling a, a recycling station and he was quite interested in the recycling station because this is what we really need at the farmers market. So I sort of uh, started to ask him a few questions and probe about what kind of materials that they have there at the market and uh, he wasn't quite sure. So what we did is um, we went down there and, and had a look. We did a bit of a waste assessment and there's three waste streams that we could identify. There's that in the public space. So there was 40 rubbish bins located all around the market and people were putting their materials in there. There was the waste created from the vendors. So from their milk from the from the coffee or whatever. They were going into their rubbish bins on the on their site. And also the waste that people were taking away with them. So the scope of, of this presentation is really focusing on the public um, recycling system. And that's where we started off with this initiative. So what we did next was a waste audit. So we physically collected up after a day's trading at the market all the waste from the rubbish bins and we emptied it out on a tarp and we began to sort it just to see what was there. And that was broken into three broad categories, which was recyclables, compostables and residual waste, which is waste to landfill. Uh, within those categories, there's also subcategories. So for instance, when we're looking at compostables, there's food waste, soiled paper, hand towels, serviettes, uh, paper bags, that sort of thing. So this is a summary of that result. Now it's extrapolated out to represent a year and it's broken down um, to with the 80 vendors. So per vendor it's 173 kilos per year um, and just short of 1.4 tonne of waste generated from the market. You can see that from this um, the large percentage of it was compostable. So again, this is the public space, this is them eating their lunch, uh, the serviettes, all that sort of thing which was ending up in the rubbish, and 41% of it uh, was residual waste. That's why I make special mention of the coffee vendors. We found uh, 600 and 631 coffee cups um, from a day's trading. Coffee cups are cardboard, they're waxed, they're not recyclable and they're not compostable. They are general waste. They represented alone 14% of that general waste to landfill. This is one item. I presented the results of the waste audit to the Farmers Market Trust. They adopted their own waste minimisation policy, so they wrote this themselves. We, we did a, a bit of consultation around that. Um, I won't, it's quite a a document, so I won't go into it all, but I'll write down the aims of it. So they aim to reduce waste created at the market and to reduce the waste output. They aim to educate the public and stakeholders on the benefits and options for waste minimisation. They aim to reduce the environmental impact of the Otago Farmers Market on its community. They aim to meet the expectations of vendors and customers at the market and to reduce the amount of waste at the market through improved options in the supply chain. They also aim to work with the DCC on resource recovery and waste management and champion Dunedin City's very first public places recycling bin. There they are. It was launched on um, the 
September the 11th, 2010, so this initiative is very much in its infancy. The Girl Guides came on board to give us a hand with, with all of that. They absolutely fabulous. They manned the bins or staffed the bins for the first three weeks and they were working towards their green badge. So they were absolutely fabulous. Um, they helped people who come along sort their waste at the bins on site and the public were really, really enthusiastic. So they, were, they sort of come along and they were expecting to see a rubbish bin and they kind of stopped and they said, well, wow, you know, about time they saw something like this in Dunedin. So that was really, really encouraging. Um, the water and waste staff from the DCC, we were down there for the first three weeks as well. We took down a worm farm, so all of the compostables being collected are, are being collected for a worm farm. The reason for that is that we can co-collect it. So the food waste, um, the compostable waste, the serviettes, the uh, meat skewers, anything that was a fibre product, it can all be collected in the same bin for a worm farm. We had some people coming along and looking in there and going, so where are the worms? It's not an actual worm farm, it's just a collection for a worm farm. All of the rubbish bins, so the 40 rubbish bins around the market were removed. So they're gone and have been replaced with these three stations. We're a little bit worried that there might be some litter um, being created or people um, you know, leaving sink, depositing their waste elsewhere. That didn't happen at all. Right, so how did it all go? Good news or bad news? Start with good news, eh? Right, so we've just done another audit, just a couple of weeks ago, actually. And what we found um, straight off the bat was predominantly with a lot of the vendors' choices, they've started to change over their packaging and make different packaging choices, is that there's already been a 15% reduction in waste. And as you can sort of see that if you look along the general waste, that's largely been in waste to landfill. So that has dropped from 41% to 27% um, in the first um, few months of this initiative. The recyclables have increased. So some of those materials that were going to landfill, they've chosen recyclable uh, option instead. So that's increased by 5%. And the composting, uh, compostables, which weighed exactly the same amount because there is less waste in the waste stream that has actually become a, a much greater part of that waste stream. So now we can see that over 78% of that waste stream can be recovered and used as a resource and not go to landfill. So that's really, really encouraging. To look at that in a graphic sense, you can see that the green, the dark green area is the compostables, um, the light green area is the recycled, but you can see in the black there how much the residual waste stream has been reduced. The bad news. After the Guild Guides left, we left the public all on their own to manage the bins and to sort separate their waste. Now this is the first time we've asked people to do this in Dunedin in a public space and without having people there to help and advise them, three weeks properly wasn't long enough. So, um, so there were some issues with what materials are what and lots of um, confusion around packaging. And to give you a really good example of that, and we'll come back to the coffee cup, we've had one vendor change it over to a bio cup. So that's a bio cup. That's compostable, so that can go in our worm farm. That's a post-consumer cardboard with a cellulose liner, and it can go to the worm farm. So we've been calling these bio cups, but we've got another coffee cup vendor down there still using one of these which is your standard stock standard coffee cup. So again, waxed, it's not recyclable or compostable. And to confuse things even more, the lids are recyclable. So just in your coffee cup choice alone, you're using, you've got to make a decision within those three bins. So we want to get both of our coffee vendors onto a bio cup, but we're still asking people to remove the lid and recycle it because it need not go to landfill. That's in separating that part. Then we've got you know, a couple of vendors that are using a waxed paper bag. So it looks like paper. It's like you can recycle paper, right? You can put it in the worm farm. I'm encouraging people to do that. But you can't put in a waxed paper into a worm farm. So communication is really, really vital that we keep that communication up. And part of this waste minimisation project was to be able to do that um, and educate the community in their packaging choices. Okay, so in, in wrapping up, what we did find is that there is a commitment there. There's a commitment by the council um, for our waste minimisation to meet our, our waste minimisation strategy targets. There's a commitment by the Otago Farmers Market Trust to make this work. There's a commitment by the vendors to change their packaging over and to, to have packaging that's more environmentally friendly. There's a commitment by the public who really want to know how to do this and to use it. 
Um, so they've shown a real willingness to do it. We need to simplify the design. There's absolutely um, no doubt about it. So one of the things we're thinking of is removing the organic waste collection for the worm farm to a separate collection altogether, keeping the recycling station as just that, um, and to improve the communication. So we've just been able to confirm since I um, did this, made this presentation up is that we're joining forces with Wastebusters and we're going to roll out the Get Real campaign um, alongside this initiative, which is a campaign around demystifying packaging choices. Okay. Thank you.